All right, welcome to Hudson View Baptist Church on this beautiful last Wednesday of May. I trust that you have had a good and productive day. We've got a special night in store. We have four uh, very special families joining us tonight for our uh, second missions connection in that many months. We have with us um, missionaries serving really in various parts of the world. We've got uh, Nate and Christine Saint who are serving in uh, Chile. And you guys just wave whenever I call your name and pe people will probably be able to see you whenever uh, you come up on the screen later. They'll see your name there. But we also have Dave and Melissa Price in France. Um, we have uh, Archie and Ruth Perez in Uruguay. And then we also have Josue and Rebecca Ortiz in Mexico, Mexico City to be exact. So we are grateful that you have joined us tonight. We're grateful to have these families with us to hear a little bit from some of our heroes serving on the field, serving in gospel ministry very, very faithfully. Um, one of the things that's a little different about tonight's Missions Connection is that all four of these missionary families are currently on the field. They are there, there uh, in their country. Last week, or last month, I think three out of the four were actually in the States for various reasons, uh, but tonight they're all on site. So I'm going to open with a word of prayer. I'll have one announcement to give you, and then we're going to jump right into our Missions Connection time. Let's pray. Our Father, we are truly grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're grateful for the opportunity to speak tonight to those who have given their lives to serve in gospel ministry. Lord, I pray that this would be a time of encouragement for them, that it would be eye-opening for us, that we would all go away knowing how to pray for one another. Lord, I pray for their various ministries tonight as they're affected in, in different ways by this uh, pandemic situation. I pray that you'd provide for and protect each one of them and the people in their ministries in a very special way. And would you use this to bring souls to Jesus Christ even through this crisis time. We pray this in his name. Amen. Well, church, I want to take a moment and just thank you very much for praying for our leadership. Thank you for praying for us as we are working through what it looks like to enter the reopening phase. And I want to ask you to continue to pray. Um, the only update that I have for you right now at this very moment is this coming Sunday will be a live stream just like we have been the past several uh, weeks, the past few months. We're, gonna, uh, we're still working through what our options look like um, and looking at, at just from a practical side how to come back together. There's a lot as we start to decipher all of the state and, and federal guidelines and regulations and and also think practically, how does that look as we come back together, especially given the area in which we live and the occupation that many of you have uh, working front lines with COVID patients. So we want to we wanna do that very, very wisely. We're not going to rush into this, but I want to ask you to pray for our leadership. We'll be meeting again tomorrow night and still charting a course forward. Um, thank you. I got some very encouraging texts this week from some of you saying, Pastor, we're praying for you. And Whatever it is that you guys decide, we stand behind you and support you. And I can't tell you how much that really does mean to, to me and to our leadership. It really brings a whole new light to we're in this together. And we really do appreciate you coming behind us and supporting us like that. We're walking through uh, situations that none of us has had to walk through before. And various churches do it various ways. Different pastors decide different ways. And I am grateful that God has called me to Hudson View Baptist Church to pastor you, and we will go through this together. I am committed to doing that, and we will do it with the Lord's leading, um, but we do appreciate your prayers as we go forward. Put that aside. We'll revisit that later. Tonight, Business at Hand is our missions connection with four very, very special missionaries, and I have asked each one of them to give us an, about a three to five minute update on what's going on in their ministries and so in no particular order, except for how they appear on my screen, I'm going to start with uh, Nate and Christine Saint serving in Chile. Um, just give us a, a, a brief overview of what you guys are doing in the ministry and how, how things are looking, some of the things God is doing currently. Sure. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to share a little bit of what's going on here in Chile. Christine would love to be with you, but she caught the stomach bug last night, uh, so I'll, I'll do this by myself. She's in the, in the next room taking care of herself and, and the children. 
Um, as far as our ministry, right before this hit, we had really we'd seen a lot of positive growth. We'd seen new families come. We'd seen old families start to come regularly. We'd seen some people volunteer to go on visitation. And I mean, every kind of indication that things are going in the right direction, we had it. And then a church about three miles down the road was responsible for 30 different people in our community that got COVID-19. So oh. we went down to, to shutdown. We went to strict quarantine. We went to no leaving the house without permission. We've come out of that now. Uh, life is pretty much back to normal in the sense that most businesses are open. Pretty much everything that used to go on still goes on, except for church meetings. It is still a barred banned by the government right now. It's, it's a crazy situation. The health minister banned church meetings specifically back a couple months ago when the church a couple miles from us had the outbreak. The health minister a week or two ago lifted his ban. We had church on Sunday. Then on Monday, a judge said, no, I'm sorry, he doesn't have the authority to lift the ban. If you hear a trash truck, sorry, it's, it's part of life. Um, but we're, we're online, preaching online. I'm, I'm emphasizing that this isn't church. This is just preaching online. We've got to come together as a family so that we can encourage one another, so that we can help one another. Some blessings of, of being online are simply that we've been able to reach more people that we never had been able to reach before, uh, especially family members of of church members have been uh, listening and, and commenting and asking some questions. We've reached some people in the States and contacted my parents that, that speak Spanish. And so there are some positive signs, but we feel like we're treading water right now, to be honest, and looking forward to, to be able to come back and, and pick up where we left off. I, I, can, I can second that about, you know, reaching people that we might not normally reach through the online venue. Uh, shortly after we got started with live streaming, I got uh, a message from one of our, our church families and said, Pastor, there are some people that we've been praying for and trying to reach that um, would have not come to church, but, but they're watching our live stream, and, and can we do more? And, and you know what? I count that as a victory through this whole process, Thank and you. I'm sure each of you are experiencing similar testimonies. I'm hearing that from really all over the world. Um, by the way, one of our ladies uh, says, Saludos a los misionarios en Chile. So anyway, that's, that's from Sister Marina. Um, I'm sure, I am sure I butchered that. But anyway, if you want, any, I, I won't, won't even go there. So, so I want to take this moment, and those of you who are watching at home, if you happen to have any questions tonight for anyone or uh, any one of these missionary families or them in general, please feel free to comment below. And we will do our best to include those in some of our conversation tonight. This is really more of a family talk, uh, very, very informal. Um, and we've told, told each one of these families, they like, do what you need to do. If they, several of them have young children. Um, and, and now some of their children are sleeping, like our next family that we're going to be going to, uh, Dave and Melissa Price in France, their children are sleeping right now because it is about 1 a.m. in the morning. So we, we, man, we feel terrible that we've kept them awake. But we're also grateful to, to be able to fellowship with them. Um, they, they have a lot of connections here in, in our ministry from over the years, and we're grateful that they're a part of our missions family. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and ask uh, you guys to give us a little update on what's going on with your ministry, your family, um, and, and how life looks for you guys. Well, we are very encouraged uh, one major update that's happening for us this weekend is we are starting church services again. Uh, Amen. So that is a big step in the right direction. But instead of having one service like we normally do, uh, we're having four because we're limited for the number of people that we can uh, have in the building. So uh, that is a huge answer to prayer. But to go back and give you just a little update of uh, the ministry up to uh, right for the confinement and the quarantine the things were going well uh, people were uh, making decisions for the Lord moving forward a lot of discipleship uh, uh, happening uh, and several people have made uh, professions of faith and are growing in the Lord so we were really encouraged to see what was happening here recently uh, one of uh, the ladies that uh, received Christ as her Savior uh, is a sister of a church member and uh, we had been praying for her family for three four years now and this is the uh, 
fruit of uh, the labor in her heart and her life and praying for them. So little things like that all along the way I have been in, in a great encouragement. Um, overall, the church has been growing. I just like uh, Brother Saint mentioned, uh, good signs of what the Lord's been doing. And we're just praying that uh, things will continue to be, um, that we would be able to pick up right where we left off once we're able to get back to normal services. Um, we had started services and uh, church services in another uh, city uh, several years ago in a city called Ruchon. That has been going uh, well, a steady, the same uh, handful of people who have been coming uh, out uh, for that. Uh, but um, we have not seen any major steps forward. So uh, me on a personal level, I've been praying a lot about how the Lord's going to lead and I'm hoping and praying that through the circumstances, um, more people would be open to hear what uh, the Bible has to say about circumstances that we're going through. Um, and just like Brother Saint mentioned, we're seeing two to three times more people following our services than we what we had in person uh, through our online services. So. Uh, I, I'm praying uh, that uh, these people that who are following us that we can uh, reach and uh, bring into the church with the gospel message. Um, overall, the ministry uh, is going well, and we're really encouraged, and we're really excited to see what the Lord uh, has in store. Uh, pray with us here for this summer. Um, there's the government is asking us not to have any baptisms, uh, any. Uh, type of children's real outreaches or anything like that, just the strict bare minimum. And, and so that puts a damper on what we had planned uh, for outreaches for the summer. Uh, we had several baptisms uh, planned for the summer. We baptized in a river uh, here, so we have to wait till it warms up a little bit. Uh, and uh, so pray that the Lord would open these doors for us, that we would be able to continue on with these projects. Uh, pray with us also. Uh, you, as you know, we have a outreach at the Tour de France every year where we hand out thousands and thousands of Gospels. And um, uh, the Tour de France is canceled uh, for right now, and they're tentatively planning for it in September, but they're not even sure. So that will be a missed opportunity to reach thousands of people that we would not normally be able to when they come into our area uh, uh, for the Tour de France. So. Overall, uh, kind of like Brother Saint was saying, I kind of treading water, <laughs> but uh, we're chomping at the bit and uh, we're ready to go for this weekend to be able to reach uh, uh, people uh, with the message of the Bible uh, in person finally after two and a half months. Amen to that. Um, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, and this may be what you were alluding to, but we had a, a game night, a Jeopardy night recently for our church. And we had a missions category, and you guys were in that category, and we talked about your ministry uh, to the Tour de France. And so we, we said, this missionary family has a, a unique uh, outreach opportunity to the Tour de France. And, and so you guys were, were one of the stars there. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> thanks for that update. Let's, let's go over to the Perez's, uh, Archie and Ruth Perez and your wife. And give us just a little update of how you guys are doing. Um, what, what's going on in your family and your ministry? Amen. Well, greetings to you all, uh, uh, Pastor Flowers and, and then uh, uh, Hudson View Baptist Church. We have such sweet memories of uh, our visit there with you. And thank you for uh, your faithfulness. And uh, it is what a comfort to know that yeah, you don't just support financially but uh, you pray for your missionaries and uh, you care about them. And, and uh, thank you so much. Um, and we just pray that all our churches will be like you. And uh, so thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, we started uh, the year, uh, it, 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 was, it started uh, with some difficulties. Uh, we had a very dear mm -hmm. lady, uh, she was doing, good um uh, no 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 problems that we know knew of and uh, one of the a strong lady in our church very used by the by the lord and and right on uh, january the second 
I got a phone call from her son and she had gone to be with the Lord. And uh, so that was, that was difficult. And uh, then uh, right prior, that was on, the, on, on March um, the 12th, my uh, uh, son-in-law, my son-in-law's dad uh, also, again, uh, he was not, uh, there was a, he was not very uh, seriously ill or anything. And uh, the Lord called him that uh, early morning also. And uh, then the, right the next day, that's when we uh, were declared uh, uh, that we, everything pretty much shut down. And uh, uh, so, uh, but uh, well, uh, in the middle of all this, we, we, we thank the Lord. I think we have grown in some areas and we are learning, we have learned to use more, a little bit more the technology. And uh, uh, we praise God. Uh, we, we have all our meetings uh, have continued uh, on um, Sunday morning, Sunday night, uh, Wednesdays, and our youth meeting uh, through Zoom. Uh, it's, it's getting done on Saturdays. And uh, one of the blessings, uh, as, as we heard from the uh, other two missionaries, was precisely, um, you know, some of those um, families uh, were able to invite their, 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 their family members to join them to hear the messages. And uh, in fact, we have had some of them saved. And um, uh, so we, uh, we thank the Lord for that right after uh, re right after the next day after uh, after the pandemic started officially here, uh, we decided that we would have a daily devotional as a church, and uh, um, uh, so that's been going on every single day. And uh, we we think we have about between three to four hundred people involved in that daily devotional, and um, uh, then we have a time of prayer, and that has been very very good. And then we have um, uh, we have uh, uh, challenged all those uh, the, the uh, believers, especially we have had uh, many from Venezuela have come in the and gotten saved in the last uh, year or so. And so uh, we asked them, why don't you go through WhatsApp send uh, you know send us this uh, this devotionals to your family. And uh, praise God. So even some of the relatives have gotten saved in Venezuela. And uh, so we, we thank the Lord for that. And uh, uh, so um, uh, our Bible Institute, uh, you know, we, uh, we have 28 students, all online students at this, uh, this time. And uh, we, we, we thank the Lord. We have not, uh, that has just continued. Uh, very uh, normal, praise the Lord. And of course, uh, we haven't um, been able to uh, uh, make visits, like of course, like in normal conditions. But we have used the phone a lot, and uh, some uh, we call the window visits. We just go and, especially uh, elderly people, we just go and and uh, greet them through the through the windows, and uh, and so that's that's been it's been um, a different, but uh, and challenging. But we praise God. The work continues on. Uh, we thank the Lord um, for one of uh, one of the churches. The Lord uh, seems to be providing a pastor for the church in Tararidas. And uh, in fact, uh, the Sunday right before uh, the uh, our, our, our quarantine, uh, he was we were he was going to be officially uh, be announced, and we will be, be, be will be become in charge of the church in Tararidas. And uh, of course, that didn't happen, but uh, uh, yet. But uh, that's something that we are eager to wait. And um, um, so uh, that so the, the church there, uh, it's been going on for uh, four and a half, five wow. years, and uh, it's been, uh, uh, of course, uh, being away, being at a distance, and going there once a week has been uh, it's been difficult. But we just thank the Lord that he has, uh, we have a pastor ready to take over the work there. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing that, that update. We too have fond memories of our time with you when you were here uh, in, in our missions conference and uh, grateful to, to get to connect with you again. Let me go to the Ortizes in Mexico, Mexico City specifically, 
and ask you guys to just kind of give us an update on on life in your family and your ministry right now. Well, thank you so much, Pastor, and um, it's so so good to be back with you guys. We have really good memories of being with you, and we we remember you dearly. And thank you so much for your faithful faithful support. We appreciate that and do not take it lightly. Um, uh, we are going into our fourth year of ministry here in Mexico City. We actually moved about five years ago, but the first year we spent it at a different church and kind of just getting to know the area and looking for a place to meet and so forth. Um, so almost four years ago, we started the church, Abundant, um, Abundant Grace Baptist Church, and it's going very well before the quarantine or before the pandem uh, pandemic. Um, it was growing. We, we, were, we were starting with a very strong year. Um, we had a, a good amount of men that we were trying to teach and train and, and, and get under our wings. And, and the church was growing. We actually had to go to two services because of space con con constraints that we had. Um, and so everything was going pretty good. And then, of course, the pandemic just stopped everything um, all of a sudden. But um, I agree with everybody. Uh, with what everybody has said, the church is growing in a different way. God had a different plan for 2020 for our churches, and the church is, is, is established, is strong, and we have seen a number of viewers that are watching our services on a weekly basis that we never had before, and family members are being interested in, in the gospel and, and, and um, people calling us to, to get their family numbers into our WhatsApp group so that we can send the material, resources. And so uh, that aspect, we actually have expanded quite dramatically. I mean, we have a Wednesday night service and a Friday service and Sunday morning service. And, and people just seem to be very active in watching and spending time to participate in those services. And so that is a really good set sign. We are really anticipating a very good start once the, the pandemic passes away and then we can actually get together again. We're actually expecting to see some growth, um, both spiritually, of course, and numerically as well. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, it seems as if things are going to start opening again, back to quote unquote normal in October. So we're really not even close just yet. The government is trying to um, basically do an informed guess or an educated guess because everything seems so, um, so out there. But our church members are responding very well we, we are connected with them on a weekly basis by different methods, and, and we do video calls every week with, with members of the church. Uh, we're doing devotionals. Every, every family of the church gives a devotion. They, they record themselves two or three minutes, and then they send it to the church. So we are, we're acting, and we're working towards having a unity in the church, um, learning that church was never a building. It was just a group of, of members, but... Um, it's been really, it's been really good, and our family is doing very well. We have three kids. One of the one-year-olds is running all over the place here, so you see us a little bit distracted because of that. Um, and we have two, uh, nine, uh, one, a one, nine-year-old and a six-year-old, and they're both doing well. So, so uh, just excited and uh, getting ready to go back to full-time ministry in the sense of being uh, with our members, and we're missing them dearly. But we know that God is in control. Amen. Well, that is an encouraging report, especially to hear of the behind-the-scenes work of keeping the bones strong within your church family. We, we really appreciate hearing stuff like that. You know, everyone, I don't care what country you're in, everyone has to, has to learn to, to um, kind of change what we're doing. We, we, have to, we have to, there's a word I'm looking for and it's not coming into my brain right now. We have to modify. We have to modify um, our ministry efforts, and I, I appreciate hearing the flexibility from from each of you as you're walking through this. Um, let me let me go to one of the questions that has come in uh, through our comments, and and please keep the questions coming, guys. We we see them. Uh, this is from Brother Epp in our church. He said, "This is for anyone who would like to answer it. What is one of the most encouraging things that somebody has done for you?" while on the field. And we can, we can open that up, whether during the pandemic time or whether, period. What is one of the most encouraging things someone has done for you or your family uh, during, during your time on the field? Um, I guess you could just kind of raise your hand and tell me if, you, if something comes to mind. Let's go to Brother Saint first. Sure, just specifically during the pandemic, and I assume your testimony would be the same, Pastor, but just those, those words of affirmation. 
when someone sends a note and says, hey, Pastor, I appreciate what you're doing. And in, one, in particular, one member who very rarely says anything unless it's to criticize privately, he publicly said, thank you for faithfully <laughs> preaching the word of God. And that, that was a huge encouragement. Yeah. Amen. That, that really does go a long way. You know, we're, I, I know we're, we're, we don't want to come across as, as those who are in the ministry or pastors as, you know, needing our, our ego stroked. And that's not what it is at all. But it, it does go a long way. When, when somebody says, you know what, th th we, we've been helped by this, or we were blessed by this, and, and I'm glad to hear that, that you're having that, that you're getting encouragement like that, even, even there on the field as well. Um, how about somebody else? Uh, Brother Perez, I see your hand. Yes. Well, we have a, a, a man that got saved about two weeks before uh, our, our last uh, uh, meeting that we had at a church. And, um, but uh, then we, um, uh, we, every year we have a whole month of, uh, of messages on the family. And uh, we decided that we will continue to put that emphasis. All the meetings are related to the family, different areas, you know, how to deal with, uh, with the children and uh, the husband wife relationship and, and so on. And, and, uh, uh, it was very encouraging for me to get um, uh, to get a, a, a WhatsApp from from this man, Pablo Villa is his name, and uh, tell me, Pastor, he says I want you to know. He says um, uh, God has really dealt with me, and uh, I have uh, learned that uh, you know I need to uh, I, I I need to go and and uh, go after my family. And uh, my mayor, as you, says, as you know, I'm all by myself. I just, uh, my, my marriage is all messed up. And I, I realize now I know why. And I just, uh, now at my main, uh, I ask, would you, would you please pray? I want, to, I want to, my family to come to know this way, the way of the mm -hmm. Lord. And um, so that was very, very encouraging to hear those words and uh, to see that the, even in, even with us not meet, meeting physically yet, he's been nurtured through all the different uh, um, messages through, uh, through the internet. You know, what comes to my mind is you, the church is not closed. The gospel ministry has not ceased. And the power of Christ will never be stopped. And, and that's just another testimony of that. We hear so many of those right now. And I think that that's good for us as believers to keep in mind that, you know, we're not, we're not at a standstill. God is still at work in our midst all around us. We may just have to modify our, our vision, right? We might have to look in a different area than where we were previously, and that's okay. And I, I really appreciate hearing a testimony of that. Um, why, don't, why don't you want to ask this one? Sure. Um we recognize that you know missionaries are our heroes, but we also realize that you all are real people and with real families, and all, we are all trying to, with the Lord's help and doing it the Lord's way, raising our families while also balancing ministry and um, being wholehearted, doing what God has called us to do. But what we want to know from our missionaries is how can we pray specifically um, for your children? I know some are grown and some are little, um, but what are... Um, some needs that you or your your burden with with your family or your your children that whether they be physical or emotional or, or whatever whether it's pandemic related or not um, maybe um, if if you would be willing to share with some some of those with us and so that we can be in prayer with you for your families yeah you guys share as much or as little as as you feel comfortable with here but how how can we as a church be in prayer for your children um, anyone want to start us off? Can we start maybe with the prices? Um, our, our children are starting, restarting school uh, next week. Uh, yeah. So uh, they go to a school here in town. Uh, so uh, that's going to be a major uh, step. And so pray for safety as all that uh, restarts. And uh, uh, Karis uh, loves school. So that it won't be any problems. Uh, Ian, on the other hand, has loved his uh, summer vacation that came early. So we will see if that goes well. 
a five-year-old after two and a half months off, uh, that might be a little difficult. So pray for safety there and that, that he can adapt back to uh, life at school and uh, and it like, keeps on going in the right direction. Pray also for Ian. He's coming into the age where he can uh, understand uh, the gospel message. Um, and I pray that he would come uh, to a saving knowledge of Christ here soon. Uh, Karis was about his age uh, when uh, she uh, made a profession of faith. And uh, so I pray that uh, uh, that would also happen uh, for him whenever uh, he understands enough to make a decision for the Lord. So that's uh, the major uh, prayer request for the children, safety, uh, and uh, get adjusted back to school next week, and salvation for Ian. Um, how about the saints? How can we pray for your children? Sure, thank you for that question. It, it means a lot to us. There's no way I can tell you everything in, in a few minutes, because just like any parent, I want my children to love each other. I want my children, the oldest is almost four. They need to learn to obey. I'd like to see them get saved one day. But I, I thought <laughs> from a ministry perspective, um, something that I hadn't thought about until it happened down here is just pray that, that God would protect their spirit through everything that we go through. Because ministry isn't all joyful. Ministry has its trials. And it's one thing for the adults to suffer, uh, but it's another thing as a dad to see my child suffer. And Hannah, my oldest, she loves waiting for people to come with me. We live in a gated community. We're still meeting in our house right now. So we spend the 15 minutes before church time out walking around and talking and, and waiting to open the gate and someone comes. And you know, the Sundays when nobody came, I'll say, okay, time to go inside. We're going to have church as a family. And she'll say, oh, people come, people come. <laughs> and uh, people aren't coming today. Or, or when someone that, and she adores everybody in the church. We've got about four or five families. That was, you know, a year ago. Now, lately, people are coming. And, and that's a blessing. Four or five families, she looks up to all of them. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell her, I'll, I'll tell my wife, hey, I got a text from so-and-so. They're coming today. And then when they don't come, no, we can't start church yet. They haven't come yet. And it's just, as the dad, you want to protect your daughters from that. Uh, but in the end, I know that God's in charge of it all, and, and he's going to take care of them. But I, I think that's the, the unique prayer request that I have for my children, that, that they would grow up loving ministry, not being hurt by the challenges of ministry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, we've noted that. We'll pray about that. Uh, while we have the Ortizes still together... In, in a calm moment, and listen, we understand that completely. Um, let's get your prayer request for your children. How can we pray for your kids? Well, thank you so much for the question also. Um, my, I was just praying about this exactly this morning, and, and one of the burdens I have is to spend our lives in ministry helping other people to know how to be saved, and our kids um, fail to do that, right? And so we understand it's the Holy Spirit that works in their hearts. But our responsibility primarily is towards our family. So maybe just pray for balance in our ministry that we can see. Um, and, and one of the, the lessons that I've learned through this pandemic is exactly that, just, just to see the importance of a family. Churches may close and families may not be able to, to join us on Sundays. And yet we still have our kids with us and that's our primary, primary responsibility. So pray for their salvation. That's, my, that's really my... Um, a burden in my heart that God can open their hearts in that early age and avoid a lot of heartaches and situations in life. And they can see in us a transparent Christian life so that they can understand what that is all about. Um, and, and many times uh, kids don't see a Christian life at their homes. And so, you know, they see this, uh, what one, one lifestyle is spoken of or preached about and then a different completely different one at home so pray for that and um and we're also praying for for a school for next year uh, we have been homeschooling our kids for the last uh, years but with the babies becoming a little bit harder and so we're trying to see some options but even the pandemic makes everything more complicated because even schools don't know what they're doing next year so anyway just pray for that and that would be and that would be a huge help sure we, we've noted that as well uh, let's go, and, and we understand that I think all of us on this, on this panel, whether we're in the States or you're in another country, we understand the heart of wanting to protect our, our children from, as Brother Saint said, and, and even Brother Ortiz, about 
you know, just, just the, the hard parts of ministry and wanting to strike that balance. I know that's a burden of ours is wanting to strike that balance of what, church and ministry and family and, and not only time, but, but just how we talk thought about energy, it. how we talk about it. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it, there's, a, there's a balance to strike there, and, and we certainly appreciate that, that prayer request. Um, let's go to the Perez's. How can we pray for your children? Well, you're, you're right, Pastor. You said um, a violence, and that's what, that was very important in our family, and uh, all our kids are grown now, but they, they all love the Lord, and three of them are praying about the mission field, and especially Mark and his wife. The, he's a pastor in Carolina, South Carolina, and he's coming back to your while or willing as a missionary. And Beth and John, they, they are in Iowa serving the Lord, but they're praying about the mission field. And recently, our daughter, Andrea, and her husband, who is my husband's assistant, uh, who also had secular jobs, are quitting their jobs because they feel called to be full-time missionaries. So we are so excited about that. And one of the things that Andrea told me, said, Mom, I don't, they have two little ones. It says, I don't. I'm not scared of the petition or anything like that because I saw God's faithfulness, the way he took care of us through the years. You know, she's our oldest daughter. And I saw the love of the people, the churches. It was so fun, so exciting. And I know it wasn't always perfect, but I'm just looking forward to that. And that brought a lot of joy to me, you know, that she will have that perspective. And so Andrea and David are looking forward to go to the States at the end of the year and raise support to come back as full-time missionaries. So, and three of our kids and their families. So pray for them, their major decisions, and they need to know exactly what mission they are applying with and, and all the details. We don't, this is confusing right now about traveling and all that you know <laughs> and even for us we were planning a furlough this year Lord willing but we don't know exactly how it's gonna work out so pray for them that they will see God's will and they they will be faithful and and they're excited mm -hmm. about it and they've been serving the Lord for years but now it's just gonna be a very full-time uh, ministry and and then two of our kids who are students at PCC, they need a lot of prayers also for God to guide them and safety and also always be centered in God's will. And we appreciate your prayers for them. Thank you. Absolutely. That, that's a different dynamic, you know, to, to where most of the other missionaries in the panel right now and even ourselves are in a, a certain stage of life. But now you guys um, have adult children. And, and that's, that's a whole nother set of burdens. I can only imagine um, what, what those burdens are. I know many of our, our members at home who are watching right now, they certainly know what those burdens are because they've gone through some of the same things. And so we can appreciate those prayer requests. Brother Perez, were you getting ready to say something? No, well, also just to pray for uh, Beth and me. Um, our daughter will have, a, she will have her, her third boy uh, in in August, and so Ruth, uh, well, we were trying to, uh, we were gonna go towards more towards the end of the year, but she, my daughter, kept on, on insisting, why don't you come in August? <laughs> and we didn't know why she was so persistent until the, when the PCC closed down and uh, Priscilla and David, they had to find a, a place to go, so they ended up going to Iowa where they are, and uh, to her their surprise, they found out that, that Bethany was hiding. Uh, the pregnancy <laughs> and uh so now we then we knew that why she wanted us to be there in august and so we well of course uh, we don't know whether that's uh, going to be possible uh no flights are going out of the uruguay uh this moment to the states uh so if there's um, please pray about that it's neat to see um even as we you know look at say the perez's who have really they have been through that stage of life that the rest of us are in and as we talk about balance and sometimes it kind of just seems really hard like you know but to watch veteran missionaries um, veteran I guess people in the ministry who have shown them proved that the Lord is faithful and they've done it the Lord's way and their 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 kids love the Lord and um, it's encouraging it's encouraging to me just to know you know God God is faithful he will 
he will um, he will work it even in our children's lives even when we feel like we fail so often um, speaking of parents uh, mrs. Rayside says hello yes so uh, Melissa's mom is watching <laughs> Melissa's mom is watching and she said what a pleasant surprise to see her daughter on uh, on our, our panel tonight so um, mrs. Rayside she said hello if you didn't catch that um, all right, we have a, another question that has come in uh, from Brother Mark. Uh, he says, how has your monthly financial support been affected by the pandemic? Have any of you seen any um, negative or positive effects, financially speaking, from the pandemic? Um, I, I can just go ahead and start. In our end, we have not seen any um, considerable change. Um, God, God has been faithful and our churches thankfully are strong and healthy. And for the most part, even, even with the pandemic, um, most churches had a good, uh, preparation in their missions fund and so forth. Um, if this continues to go and it doesn't seem to be that way, but if, the, if this were continued to go for several months, perhaps in the near future, it would be an issue. But so far in our case, it has not been. Praise the Lord for that. Um, Somebody else, ha have you been affected at all uh, no any differently? Brother Saint? No change for us. No, no change. change. Praise the Lord. Status quo is, is a good quo. Um, yeah. Anybody else? Same here. Same, same with the prices. That's a great report. And same with the Perez's. Yes. Amen. Amen to that. Well, then, let me, let me tag on to that question and ask this. How, how economically have the people in your ministry been affected? Um, have you seen any effect there with the shutdown and, and maybe, maybe hourly workers or you know, those who have lost their jobs um, or paused their jobs? Have you seen any, any negative effects? Anybody seen like that, anything like that in your ministry? Yeah. Well, just about all our people uh, in, uh, in our church, uh, I would say 90 95 percent or more la have lost their jobs and um uh, so the church it's um we had to, uh, the, uh, the church had some savings of course we have five different congregate churches but the main church we had some savings and uh mm -hmm. so uh we are uh, doing everything of course we have for to uh to, for, to help the national pastors and uh so we are struggling with that area would allow, of course, like my son-in-law, he was uh, he's, he gets uh, part-time uh, funds from the church, and then he's uh, he work he was working at a jewelry, and the, uh, of course the, all that is uh, it's gone. So there, there that's there's a struggle, and uh, but even um, even though um, our people lost their jobs, some of them will be you know will be, are getting benefits for three months. From the government, and uh, it is really uh, um, uh, touching, heart touching to see them, even know that they know that they, you know, three months and they're not gonna get any funds. But uh, most of them still this month they went in and uh, and and send their tithe and uh, and promise uh, uh, and faith promise as well, and that was really a blessing. So uh, please pray about that. Uh, what's what's going to happen? I think we are in uh, uh, financially. I think uh, our country is uh, like I guess most of Latin America countries. We are in big trouble, and um, so uh, we thank the Lord um, as far as our our support. Uh, but again, we need to as we have all these uh, different national pastors that are already hurting, and um, uh, just pray about that and. Um, uh, the Lord will, will just undertake the whole situation. And uh, since most of our people have lost their jobs, so we have, um, we've been providing some, uh, uh, we've made some baskets uh, from, you know, uh, food and so on to help those that uh, don't have enough to eat. And I mean, that's, that's hard to hear that 95% of the people in your ministry have lost their jobs. That That's difficult. Um, what, before I hear from the others on the same question, those of you watching at home, if you're just tuning in, uh, feel free to ask any questions of our missionaries um, that, that you may have. Just put them in the, the comments section below the video, and we'll be glad to, 
incorporate them if we can. Um, anybody else have any have? How have the people in your ministry been affected financially by this? Uh, Brother Saint, was that your hand raising? Yes, sir. Uh, our our church, praise the Lord, is quite the opposite. Uh, pretty much everyone has not been affected as far as our church members. Two drive trucks, and so they're essential workers as far as keeping you know stores stocked. One is an accountant, works from home. The other, other is the government employee, so he's not going to work, but the government continues paying his salary, and uh, that's not the case for most of Chile. Some of our, not immediate neighbors, but neighbors a mile or two away, I know are, are struggling financially. We're praying about maybe trying to help them with some food as a way to try to reach out. But even the contacts we have, the people that maybe came to church just once or twice, um, you know, one of them delivers gas, and so he's an essential worker. Another runs a store from their own house. And so they have increased business during this time. So the people that we know personally haven't been suffering, but we know they're suffering out there. Amen. All right. Um, how about the prices? Tell us about how your people are being affected financially. Um, in our church, uh, our situation is uh, different probably in the fact that we are a European country with uh, socialism and uh, so uh, we really live a different type of situation than what uh, South American missionaries uh, deal with. Uh, all of, about three quarters of our people uh, are unemployed even before uh, the pandemic. Um, uh, and that's normal life for over here. Um, so the question is, is the government going to be able to continue doing that? uh after this pandemic because france is in a very scary situation uh right now where they don't know where they're pulling the money out of uh so uh there's a lot of concern uh about uh, if they're going to continue getting uh their monthly stipend from the uh, government so that's a big concern uh for people here over half of people who are employed uh uh think that they probably will be laid off in the next couple months uh, also. So um, even though we're coming out of the quarantine, uh, things do not look uh, very uh, positive uh, for here in France. Having said that though, um, we, uh, I mentioned uh, and I shared a, a need uh, with the people of our church. Uh, we have uh, friends that are, uh, missionaries, pastors in Romania, and their uh, ministry is primarily amongst gypsies. And we have several gypsy families in the church also. So that, you know, uh, tugged on the heart cords a little bit uh, and heart strings, sorry, I'm thinking uh, French. <laughs> um, and um, we, as a church, we were able to send a large uh, gift, uh, large for us anyway, uh, to Romania. So it was really encouraging, even though these people are not sure uh, what's going to happen here. Like the, the other missionaries are saying next month or two, uh, they saw, hey, we, we, we still have food. We still can pay the electric bill. Uh, we need to help. We need to do something uh, on our end to help uh, other uh, brothers and sisters in Christ who are in a bad situation uh, where uh, these people were not eating for days on end. Wow. Wow. Uh, that's eye-opening to hear some of this. Um, things that we, I think we take for granted here. Uh, we, we've been hit economically, but not, not nearly as, as hard as maybe some of the things that you're describing. Um, how, and I'm, when I say we, I just mean our, our country and community, period. Um, how about the Ortizas? Have you guys noticed any um, any negative effects financially amongst your people because of the pandemic? Um, our church is kind of, is not in the lowest area, lowest economic area. So we have kind of not really middle class, but kind of lower middle class people mostly. So it hasn't affected, most of our people are doing okay. Although some of them, you know, barbers or um, people kind of in that sector, they obviously have less business, but they haven't closed down completely, even though they probably were supposed to. Um, but we do have some people um, that are in the lower end and they, they don't have any work and there's no stimulus package here in Mexico. 
So we've been um, we've been able to send also like the Paris family. We've been able to send um, food baskets or food bags to to our people and help um, in any way that we can. But Mexico in general, there's so many people that live day to day or Mexico City. So you know there's so many people here that are struggling. Our church in general, they're okay. Uh, most of them, but we do have some people that are that would be struggling more than more than others that don't have any work right now and no income at all. Sure. Um, well, thank you guys for, for sharing that with us. Let me ask you this. Is there um, a particular, I've given you a couple of questions to think about. Is there a particular spiritual lesson the Lord has taught you recently um, or, uh, and or a specific passage of scripture that has been particularly meaningful or helpful to you, whether, whether because of pandemic or just, just in life in general? Um, that might be an encouragement to those who are watching. Um, anyone have anything like that that comes to mind? Something the Lord's been teaching you and or a particular passage of scripture that's been particularly helpful. How about Brother Price? One thing that has my personal, my personality is I want to get out and work and do. Uh, um, and I've realized, uh, and the Lord has taught me patience and just sitting and waiting and i've come to realize that there is a lot of uh, good aspects to just waiting on the lord uh and just patiently going about what you can do and letting the lord take care of the rest not doing it in your own power and allowing him to accomplish the ministry that he has planned and not the one that you want to push forward in your agenda so uh patience and uh, and also perseverance in waiting for that patience. <laughs> I, I think a lot of times we, we do get impatient and we, we have to come to the, realize this is not about me. This is about the Lord. And you know what? If, if, if I just get to follow him and, and do today what he wants me to do, it might not be what I had planned, but it's okay because he's the one who's in control and this life's about him. It's not about me. Um, good. Thank you for sharing that. Somebody else? Uh, a particular spiritual lesson or passage that has been helpful to you recently, Brother Saint? Sure. I'll just echo what Brother Price said. Uh, shortly after the shutdown started, I started teaching through uh, Hebrews 11, the, the Hall of Faith, as we like to know it. And of course, you know, Abel and Enoch, the first two, they don't teach us a whole lot necessarily about patience. It's more of walking with God and having a relationship with God. But then we get to know him. And Noah spent 120 years, if I'm not mistaken, building the ark, 120 years waiting for his big moment, his, his time to shine, if we could put it that way. We skipped ahead to Sarah for Mother's Day, and Sarah had to wait 25 years before she could have the child that God promised her. And then this Sunday, I'm going to teach on Abraham. Abraham was promised an inheritance for his descendants. He never got to see that promise. He never got to see that promise fulfilled, but yet he set out to a place that he didn't know where he was going. He obeyed God. He trusted God. And, and like Brother Price said, patience. And while I hope that's been a blessing to our people, I know that's spoken to me. It's incredible as, as preachers. You got to preach to yourself before you can preach to anyone else. Amen to that. Uh, anybody else have a, a spiritual lesson or a particular verse that's been helpful to you recently? In, in, our, in our case, I think one of the things that we've learned um, and we preach about this all, all the time. Don't make plans. God is always in control. And, and yet, you know, 2020 for many of us, at least in our case, we had every month scheduled and activities and so forth. So it was a great lesson to really see, really do not uh, think about tomorrow like it belongs to you, but just, just truly wait on the Lord. So that was a great lesson for us. Uh, anybody else? A verse that uh, that I uh, share with our people uh, as we started this pandemic is Isaiah 41.10, that he says, For uh, fear not, for I am with thee. And then he continues on. But, uh, you know, um, I, I have not counted how many times, but I know many, 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 many times the Bible, uh, you find that phrase fear not and um uh so uh that has kind of be a, a key verse uh for us and our people 
and uh, the, to trust the Lord. And uh, we don't understand, uh, you know, what, uh, why this is, uh, the Lord has allowed that, this to happen. But, uh, uh, but we love the Lord. And uh, uh, so it, this is helping us in many ways. And I see our people growing. And I, uh, in fact, uh, I really feel that as we go back and we start meeting, uh, I can sense that our people have grown in the Lord and, and trust in the Lord. And uh, then as, uh, as I mentioned, now um, this is a health pandemic, but now we come into the financial pandemic. And just like the, the Lord has helped us, uh, he will continue to, to sustain us. Amen. That, that's Amen. it. It's a very vital, vital encouragement to realize God is faithful. No matter what it is we're going through, the, the God who was faithful in X will be faithful in Y. And, and that's something we, we need to keep our, our focus on. Um, another question that has come in actually comes from Pastor Josh. Now, Pastor Josh is not here right now. He's normally here running the soundboard. Um, church, we have Katrina. She's running the soundboard tonight in the computer and doing a, a fine job. I haven't heard anybody complaining about the sound or video, so that's a good thing. Uh, so she's doing a good job back there. But Pastor Josh is away, so he, he's had an opportunity to submit a question, and he asked, have you guys um, found your, what, what are some of your think outside the box methods of staying in touch with your church? You know, um, if you can't visit, you can't fellowship, what are some of your think outside the box methods of staying in touch with everybody? Uh, anything like that come to mind, or you have any testimonies about that? Brother Price, let's start with you. Um, yeah. I'm pretty tech savvy, but I don't like technology <laughs> too much. <laughs> I, uh, I can get the, the computer to do what I need it to do, but that's uh, all I want it to do. But so uh, one thing I have started uh, that has been outside of the box for me, but probably is just normal routine for everybody else is um, text messaging hasn't been a part of my life uh, really uh, up until now. I, I, I am young. Uh, so, you know, young ish guys. <laughs> um, so it should be normal for me, but it was not. And uh, so um, Every morning, uh, when, uh, I would send out, I, I still send out, since the start of the quarantine, uh, I send out a, a morning devotional to everyone in the church uh, uh, by text message. And so uh, a lot of the contact uh, and the up, upkeep with people instead of in, in person visiting has been uh, through text messaging. And it's uh, you know, people seem to share more intimate maybe things uh, that way than that they would normally uh, in person. Uh, you see the real nature of the person uh, coming through sometimes. And that's that's good. It's a good thing. Uh, so that has pushed me outside of the box, even though for probably everybody else it's normal. <laughs> Amen to that. I think we could all we could all say that, you know, that we've been pushed outside of the the technological bounds that we were we were in before all this started um somebody else what 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 outside the box methods have you found helpful in staying in touch anything like that come to mind well let me let me give yeah. you a, 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 a testimony no, uh, not not in the, when we are the sending church uh for what uh, for uh, um, a missionary family here in uruguay and um so this uh, um, Juan Terrin is his name. Uh, he was uh, he was sharing with me, uh, you know that how uh, he he said he he writes the messages, the sermons. A lot of his people, that's his the converts are 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 all elderly people, and so um, he 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 said he they, they don't have uh, they don't have much of uh, a technology. So he writes the messages, the sermons, then he goes and he just put them under the door. And uh, that's how wow. he's uh, getting to them. That was really a blessing. And just to hear, to sense his heart, he needed to get the, 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 the God's word to, to, the, to his people. That's great. That, what a testimony. Um, I think, Brother Ortiz, were you getting ready to say something? Yep. Sure, sure, I was just going to um, say, what we were doing is every day we send what we call the 
the um, many of the day, the many of the menu of the day, which is a different art, uh, the a different items like uh, a sermon that we would recommend, or an article that we would like them to read, or the old sermon that we have preached in the past, and um, and so we're trying to maintain our people to for different options, so a spiritual song or. Uh, you know, some something that will be edifying for them during the day, and they can pick and choose during the day what to listen to or read to or whatever. Uh, for several weeks, I was I was reading the news. I was basically doing like a newscast. Um, it was just so much negativity and so much gloom uh, news every day. So I would like uh, read the news to them, and then I would give them a biblical perspective on like, what how how are we supposed to read this. From a biblical uh, perspective, and then it kind of died down, um, and so we stopped doing that. But that was very helpful for several weeks. And then we record a daily podcast uh, or a weekly podcast, rather, and we send that to them also. And uh, we we fraction the church into different groups, and so we do video calls with them every week. And each group sends to that particular group um, a devotional that they record. So you know, just trying to. Um, to work our ways through technology and, and keep the church together that way. That's a wow. great, great idea. Great idea to stay connected, but also to stay, stay in a, a biblically challenging mode. Um, right. Any, anybody else? Any out-of-the-box connections, uh, techniques that you found? Well, I'm the only one who hasn't spoken simply because, uh, please not, sorry, Sister Ferris, uh, you didn't get a chance to speak either. No, go ahead, um, but, go ahead. Just because I've not done anything necessarily out of the box. Uh, Brother Price, you mentioned people are more open through technology. I found it quite the opposite. I, I need to understand the nuance. When they said something, did they say it in meaning ugly or, or not? Or I, I need to be there to, to really understand them. And we're also, we also face a technology challenge among our group because we have several older people who you know don't have a smartphone, who don't have internet. And child takes the phone over to the older the older couple and and they can listen that way uh, not a funny story but a, a sad almost scary story we have an older widow lady in our, our church uh, that lives just a couple blocks from our house but she's never invited me over to her house because it's not her house it's her brother's house she she never had any children she's by herself and her brother and her brother's a drunk and so she made it very clear i'm not ever supposed to come to her house i don't even know where she lives um, but when this started, I'd, I'd call her every week. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. How you doing? Doing okay. And then for three, four weeks, nothing. I'd call every day, odd hours of the day. I thought, Lord, this lady's gone on to heaven and I don't know about it. And, and then just Sunday, I went out shopping and I saw her. And, and you talk about thrill. Uh, what a thrill, what a joy to know that she's doing okay and she's looking forward to coming back to church as soon as she can. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for sharing those. Just a couple, a couple of comments that have come in from Megan Rayside. She says, hi, Dave and Melissa. And she says, hello to our friends, the Ortizes. Uh, that's from uh, Megan Rayside, just so you guys know. This is kind of fun, speaking of outside the box. I mean, these are, these are people that um, we may or may not get to interact with on a regular basis. And see, technology brings us together in ways that maybe we wouldn't have planned. Um, you know what, I, I want to close out this time and ask you if you could give us, if you could sum up together uh, one main prayer request that you could leave with us. And I'm going to ask our church family to take note of them and to pray tonight for your one main prayer request. Um, I know it may take you a moment. It, this could be for the, the husband or the wife. It doesn't matter whoever would like to share or both if you wanted to. Uh, but, but one main request that we could we could challenge our, our church to be praying for tonight as we finish out our evening. Uh, why don't we start w at, with the prices? The uh, the equivalent of CNN here in France. It's called uh, BFM TV. Um, they have run uh, segments on their news uh, broadcast on several occasions putting the fault uh, for the coronavirus outbreak on the evangelical church. And they did it again today. Um, it was up on their website again, uh, putting the fault on the 
the reason was a big gathering of evangelical churches up in the northeast of France. And sadly, uh, several of our people have been, uh, put it in modern terms, verbally abused, where they were actually scared for physical attack uh, when they were handing out a tract or giving a Bible uh, to somebody here during uh, this quarantine when they met people, uh, contacts at the grocery store or something like that. And the people were saying, all of this is your fault because you're in that crazy cult. Um, so pray for safety for us specifically in the church, uh, for the people of the church, and that this would not be a hindrance uh, to reaching out with the gospel and that uh, this would not be just another barrier in front of the message that we have to share with the lost here. Amen. Amen. We'll pray for for protection of your, your testimony and, and just a, a, a rising to the top of your, um, uh, just, just not, not appearing to others at, at fault here at all, because obviously we know that's not the case, uh, to, that the Lord would protect your testimony there. Um, good. And your people physically, obviously, that, that's a scary situation. Um, let's go to the Perez's. How can we, what is one thing we can pray for you guys about? Yes, well, uh, as uh, I share, we shared with you uh, a few minutes ago, uh, three of our kids are looking into uh, uh, the mission field. Uh, one of them is here, our daughter and her husband, and uh, they're looking into, uh, they have had a job here in Uruguay, and uh, the whole situation, of course, has become critical. Uh, and uh, now, so they want to go and raise uh, support um, and then come back and serve the Lord in uh, Uruguay. And then we have our, our then Mark and, and Bethany, of course, uh, one is in uh, South Carolina, the other one in Iowa, and they're both also looking into uh, the mission field. Uh, so please pray for them. Uh, for the that the Lord will just undertake um, uh, this whole uh, situation and give him uh, wisdom and guidance. And uh, also, uh, please pray. Uh, I guess uh, just like all of you, we want to get uh, back to normal, to this new normality as soon as possible. And uh, we there's no date in Uruguay uh, yet when we're going to be allowed to to come together again and we just pray that uh, that we will continue to to be patient and uh, trust the lord um we we have uh, there's an attitude from some uh, some uh, churches towards the government and they want to go ahead and continue to meet even uh without the uh, getting uh, the approval of the government and uh so just uh, pray for that Pray for that uh, for us for, for wisdom and how what to do, and um, just that we would do uh, a goal um, with the right uh, uh, spirit and uh, do what needs to be done uh, and obey the Lord and of course, but also uh, we need to see and and uh, what uh, um, what our attitude. We just pray that the Lord will give us the right attitude towards the government as well. Amen to that. I think we can all identify with that, that latter prayer request of, you know, let's, let's do this in the most Christ-like way. And that's a, that's a fine line that we don't, all, we don't all understand and we need wisdom for. Uh, and we'll pray for your children to have direction for their next steps. Um, how about Brother Saint? How can, what is one thing that we can be praying for you guys about? Church property is the biggest prayer request on, on my heart, at least. Um, many of you know, more than two years ago now, we signed papers uh, agreeing to purchase the property, the construction company to sell the property. Uh, a year and nine months ago, when September comes, it'll be two years, uh, we were able to pay for it by God's grace. We still don't have it. And with this shutdown, things haven't really moved along. Um, and so we're praying that God would work and, and the paperwork that needs to be handled would be handled and the construction company would be able to turn that over pretty quick. Uh, with with COVID-19, I assume that when we get back to church, we're going to have to socially distance. 
So we're still in our house. We, we reconfigured everything. My wife has been a trooper and in allowing the furniture to be rearranged the way that maybe she didn't want it. But we can fit four different family groups in our, our building uh, for about a, a total of 30 people. And that's, that's our group right now. We can't have visitors. And so when we get the church property, we can then build an addition. And, and I think the, the faithfulness of the church people here giving, I think we've got the funds to do that addition. And then we can hold, you know, 60, 70 people, 10 different family groups. We'll have a lot more options to grow. Uh, but it, it hinges on that building, the Lord knows. And this is where I just need to be patient again. But we, we certainly pray every day that he would uh, provide the paperwork, provide whatever's holding this up, that we can have the property soon. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll pray about your property needs and that the Lord will allow you guys to get in there very, very soon and that Christine's furniture doesn't have to be rearranged for too long. Uh, let's go to the Ortizes. How, what, is, what is one particular thing we could be praying for concerning you guys? Right. Well, in many senses, I, I feel like Paul, he wrote the Thessalonians. Uh, he was eager and anxious to see how the Thessalonians were doing. He hadn't seen them for a while. And um, there was some opposition, and so he sent Tim he sends Timothy. Um, in, in our way, I feel the same way. I'm I'm really curious and anxious and eager to see how our people are spiritually doing. And while we talk to them and while we connect with them, you know that communication is quite limited compared to in-person communication and fellowship. So I'm just eager to find out how they are all doing. And I pray that they are strong and growing and that, they, that this time was a time of reflection and edification for them and not just waste the time as, as we could get together. So that would be my, my, my biggest um, prayer request. Well, thank you. What I'd like to do for those of you watching at home and, and to our missionaries here on the panel, I would like to go ahead and lead us in a word of prayer. And I want to pray for these, these, each of these main prayer requests for our missionary families, and then we'll close out. But I want to encourage you, church, to uh, take these prayer requests seriously. And tonight, maybe uh, before you go to bed, whether individually or as a family, pray specifically for these needs that our missionaries have asked us to pray for. So why don't you join with me as we spend just a few moments in prayer as we wrap up this discussion panel. Our Father, we want to thank you for the time we've had to fellowship a bit and catch up with our dear missionaries in these various locations. Lord, thank you for their heart to continue to serve you, even through the difficulties that the pandemic has presented to them, and, and just that the ministry presents. Lord, thank you for upholding them, and thank you for giving them a spirit to persevere uh, for the sake of the gospel. I want to pray very specifically for the Price family tonight, that you would protect uh, their church, their reputation, uh, the, 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 the name of believers uh, all over France and specifically their area of France that, that the truth would come out, that it, it would not be the church that takes the fall, that doesn't become the scapegoat here, uh, but, but that you would uh, have the name of Jesus Christ exalted in that place. And I pray that you would protect physically those in the church who have feared for their own health and uh, well-being because of threats or interactions uh, in a negative way from those in their community, I pray that you would resolve that very, very soon and use the prices to be an integral part of the rebuilding process there after this pandemic. Lord, I also want to pray for the Perez's, specifically for their three children, as they are facing uh, life's decisions. And Lord, we, we all understand what that is like. I pray that you would guide and direct and provide for each one of them in their various situations. And Father, that you would also give the Perez's wisdom to know how to meet again, that they would not fall to one extreme or the other, but they would follow you as you lead them back into a, a sense of normality in their meeting together, their meeting times and the locations and, and even their methods of what they're doing. Father, I also pray for uh, the saints. Uh, this has been a, a long journey in obtaining this church property that does not seem to be quite complete. And Father, I pray that you would bring an end to that journey very soon, a positive end where the saints would be able to move their church into that property and be able to um, have the space they need to socially distance and not just socially distance, but to grow and see many souls come to know you even through the tool of a church property. And Father, I pray for the Ortizes. We pray for spiritual growth and 
perseverance of individuals within their church family and, and then the ability for Brother and Mrs. Ortiz to be able to touch base with them and, and to ascertain how each one of their church family members are doing. I pray that you would help them in a very special way. I pray for each one of these, these families, for uh, Dave and Melissa and for uh, Archie and Ruth and for Nate and Christine and for Josue and Rebecca, that you would uh, place your hands of protection around them and their children, that you would continue to provide for and encourage them May even tonight as they go to bed, that they would experience the joy of yours, the joy of the Lord uh, in a renewed and refreshing way. Uh, Father, we, we pray that you could just continue to use them for your honor and glory in their various places of service. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for those of you at home who have joined us tonight for our special Missions Connection. Um, we will likely look forward to doing another Missions Connection at the end of the next month. We've done it the last Wednesday of the month, and maybe we'll keep doing this for a while. Um, it's been great to be able to reconnect with our missionaries in a visual way, not just in a, not just in a, a letter way. And I, I hear that. That's okay. You, you don't have to mute him. We, we, welcome, we welcome that sound. Um, it's been a joy to catch up with you guys. Um, those of you at home, we're going to sign off and see you later. Missionaries, you just stay right there for just a moment. I want to say goodbye to you uh, officially uh, here in just a moment. But thank you guys at home for tuning in tonight. We miss you. We love you. We look forward to connecting with you in various ways again. What you say? Announcements. We have announcements. Uh, let me give those to you. Uh, let's see. Real quickly, shotgun approach, Monday night. Don't forget, ladies' devotion at 8 p.m. Uh, stay connected. Uh, the Tuesday, tu next Tuesday, we'll have Zoom at 7 p.m. Um, let's see, tomorrow. Thursday, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we'll have our Zoom fellowship. So don't forget that. Tune in for that. Our uh, Friday night, boys and girls, if you've already left the room, your moms and others have to tell you. But boys and girls, Friday night at what time? Seven. Seven, Seven o'clock. <laughs> 7 o'clock Friday night, we have a live event for all of our boys and girls. This is a, a sing-along story time with Tubby. Now, for our missionaries, let me tell you who Tubby is. Tubby is a friend of ours that we met during the pandemic. He, he came around uh, whenever our church shut down, and he has taken up residence. He's a monkey, and he, he has visited us for all of our children's corners. We've had about 10 sessions or so. Um, I think he's walking this way now. Come over here, Tubby. <laughs> here, here's Tubby. Tubby is here. Aww. And this, this is Tubby. I don't know uh, if you guys can see him well, but this is Tubby. And we're going to be having a sing-along and story time with Tubby this Friday night at 7 p.m. It'll be a live event. It'll, of course, it'll be recorded and available um, later on Facebook. But live this Friday night at 7 p.m. Missionaries, you're welcome to join us for that, too. Um, but we'll be taking probably some favorites and doing some interactive things. It'll be on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Friday night. And then um, uh, I'm, I don't have Pastor Josh here to tell me what the teen announcement is for our teens, but normally they do a check-in uh, by Zoom, and I assume that's going to be on Friday. If it's not, teens, you do what Pastor Josh has uh, told you already. Is that all of our announcements, Tubby? Yep. All right, good. <laughs> Tubby says that's it. We can close. So. Uh, those of you at home, thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to sign off, say goodbye to you, and we'll see you again. Uh, live stream right here this Sunday, uh, not in person, but live stream at 11 a.m. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great night. See you later. Bye-bye.